Radio Wiltshire. Thank you, Sam. It's 718. Ben with you. And it was great, wasn't it, to see and hear people applauding our doctors, our nurses, our carers and other key workers last night. But what is it actually like working on the front line? We might get brief snapshots in documentaries, but none of us, unless we do it, really know what it feels like. Certainly, Dr Catherine Henderson, President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, joins us. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, what does it mean to you and, and people like you when you see that applause? It was so touching. You get tears in your eyes. You feel all kind of like we don't normally feel. Um, it's very, very kind of people to do it. There's lots of people who are making absolutely amazing efforts and community efforts um, to support what's going on, support the public. Um, but yes, we're very, very grateful. And Catherine, I've seen some lovely videos of people, you know, in the front line off shift reacting on Facebook to seeing that. And, you know, some of them blubbering their eyes out and crying. What about when it actually comes to it? Is there anything wrong with being like that actually on shift as well? Or have you got to stay calm, cold and calculated all the time? <laughs> no, I hopefully we, we're, we're, we're not cold and calculated, but on shift, yes, you're, you tend to be so busy that actually you've got to you do just get on with the job. But we have to have moments of humour, moments of downtime, moments moments of getting away from the shop floor and into a safe space where somebody can just take a moment to get over what they've been doing, um, have a cup of tea, eat something, get their blood sugar back up again, and then get back out there. So yes, you need you need the sort of human moments at all points in our in our work. Yeah, and, and have you got everything that you need now, you know, in our hospitals? Because I, I saw quite a few comments saying, look, it's great that people are going out and clapping in such force, but people should also go out and vote for a government that provides the basis of good care for our doctors, for our nurses, for our surgeons, and gives them a chance to at least get on top of it. You know, you understand that sentiment. I understand that sentiment, but we've now, I think mostly the kit is getting out there. There are still, there are still logistic issues about this. This is a vast amount of stuff to be getting out there. We're dealing with, a, you know, it's an overused word, but it's really true. It's an unprecedented event. And there is a, a real need to let's get on with this. I don't think making points about the government is particularly helpful at the moment. We're in the situation we're in. We've now got guidance that was published yesterday that um, is very reassuring for healthcare workers. And as a college, we have welcomed and supported it. And then we need the logistics to move vast amounts of kit around the place so that we've got the kit that we need when we need it. And it's not just hospitals, it's social care, it's primary care, it's residential nursing homes. It's all these places that are patient facing that need to have the right kit. So it's really quite a big deal to do this. So it's not surprising that it's, it's going to be tough. And I really hope now that the promises that it's all going to work out are, are going to um, be true. Because as far as all the projections show, you know, these next 14 days will be some of the most important that many of our hospitals have ever seen. It's incredibly important that we understand this lag between people catching the infection and them turning up in hospital. So we need people now to be absolutely maintaining the stay at home policy because we need there to be a reduction in the number of presentations into the NHS so that everything can be planned and we keep the capacity that we've got. At the moment, we've got enough capacity to cope, but what we don't want is that changing. So we need people to stay at home, but we also need people to who have got serious other health problems to get in touch with the NHS, because we're seeing a drop off the number of people who are presenting with heart attacks and strokes, for example. It seems unlikely that that has actually gone down in that sort of time frame. So we're worried that there are some people staying at home who should be getting in touch with the health services and are maybe needing to come into hospital. So we need a balance of the of the general public doing what they're told and staying in, despite that glorious weather that it sounds like we're going to be getting. But we also need people who have got problems, particularly you know children who seem to be fortunately not too badly affected by this, who are unwell. If you're worried about them, get in touch with your GP 111 service or come to the hospital. If you've got a child who you think is seriously unwell, don't leave it. Dr Catherine Henderson, great to speak to you. Thank you. The president of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. Great to get that insight. Humour, important for all these people on the front line. Bit of black humour, I'm betting, at times as well, doing their incredible work. Let's hope she's right. And logistics are in place to make sure that they're enabled to be able to do 
all that incredible work. Well done to you if you got out last night and clapped. More of that later. Uh, do the next best thing, or in fact, the, the best thing, and stay at home now, all right?